Hello, this is Sean and Ashlyn with another Vectorworks tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the Windows insertion tool here in the building shell drawer of our tool sets palette. The Windows insertion tool is very similar to the door insertion tool. It's got a lot of things in common with the stair tools. A lot of these tools in the building shell set that have uh, many customizable options. You can have a lot of different kinds of doors and windows and so there's a lot of settings to get just the kind of door or window or staircase or bell tower or whatever it is that you want for your um, for your design. Now, all of these tools are assuming that you're working with a wall. So you want to use the wall tool. If you're going to play with this on your own, go ahead and grab a, the wall tool and quickly draw a wall. It's not too difficult to use. I'm not going to go into it right now, uh, but they're looking for inserting themselves into a wall. Now you can have a window or a door floating in space. You can have it up against a extruded polygon. It doesn't care, but for all the special features, like the best one is when you go to insert a window in a wall, it automatically cuts out the opening for you. No matter where you put the window, it, it has this sort of cookie cutter that follows it along and cuts out the part of the wall that, that wants to be, have a hole in it. Um, that's not going to happen with other kinds of objects uh, that you're going to be inserting it into. So play around with the wall when you do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the window. So I have a window in here already, and you notice that it's got some gray on the sash, some gray paint on the sash, and it's got green on the trims. And the window is just sort of this beigey color, so we can see the, the paint a little bit, very Northwest color palette we got going on. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select the window tool settings, and here's our little floating cursor with our window uh, ready to be inserted. But I went back in and kind of set everything back to default. So we, we need to build our window first, so, so you can see how that works. So the way to do that, a couple of different ways to get there, but the easiest way for me is just to click on the preferences uh, button here in our mode bar with the wrench and the pencil uh, crossing over each other. When you go ahead and click on that, it's gonna open up the window settings window, which is quite involved. There's lots of things that we can change. Starting off with the general tab here at the top here, we can change the shape of our window. We're gonna leave it square, but we could do round or gothic or whatever you want up here. Um, we can include a transom if we so chose. Uh, we're not going to. It's gonna, we may, you might start off with fixed glass as a default, just kind of a window that you can't open, but we're gonna go ahead and look for that double hung window. But you notice from this pull down menu, there's a lot of different kinds of architectural style windows that you could do. So here's our little double hung window, a little with a sash that you, that you open. And notice that we have the 3D preview and a plan preview off to the side. So we can kind of keep an eye on what we're doing by watching this preview. You can, of course, change this to a different view if that makes it easier for you. And you, need, you can even render it in OpenGL after you start applying some color on it to make sure that the color is going in the spots that you want. So down here, we also have the size of our window. So this is sort of the default two and a half and four foot uh, uh, sizes that we'll leave it for, that's fine. We can also say how high in the wall we want the window to be inserted. Right now it's six foot eight inches to the head of the window, to the top of the window, but you could flip that to the sill if you'd prefer to do it that way. And then you can also offset it. I'm gonna skip these next couple of tabs, even though there's some good stuff in here that you should check out and jump down here to jam and sash, just to show you what a lot of these choices down here are similar. They're just what, how you want to customize various parts of the window. So right now the sash, that's this part that holds the glass, is set by default to two inches. I could change that to three inches if I wanted. You can see it makes it kind of thick, um, thicker than I'd like. So I'm going to go back to two inches and leave that alone. But all of these uh, are, are ways that you can control how the window appears. So we're not actually going to do anything on this window, but I want to show you that that's the basic um, uh, way that you can change the shapes of things. We'll go ahead and include a sill on here. And notice that with the sill, like a lot of other things, you can have many parts of this sill that can be customizable. For example, one is going to this little dimension line right here. That's the sill lip. So one is referring to one. And if I want it to be thicker than an inch, I can just type in a different number here and it will make that a little bit thicker or shorter or whatever you want. And here you can change the sill type to a couple of different choices there as well. If we had a transom, we could mess with the transom now, but we don't. Um, let's go to the trim tab and check both interior and exterior trims. And I'm gonna go ahead and put trim underneath the stool and underneath the sill because I think it looks good having the trim all the way around the window. And you can also make them separate. Uh, you can say that I want the exterior trim to be six inches thick instead of four inches wide. Um, so there's our six inch uh, trim. You can see now it's got two lines in there. That's the exterior trim on the back of the window and here's the interior trim on the inside of the window. Um, and that's all good to go. Our lintel, if you wanted to include a lintel on the outside, you could. Now with Muntins, I want to do this classic kind of two over one style 
window. So I'm going to just, just check top sash here. And under vertical bars, I'm going to type one and then let it be. So there's one vertical bar in the top sash. If I wanted them to be in both sashes, I could just add that checkbox. If I wanted to give a little sort of crosshair style um, window at the top, I could do that but I want this guy here, so I'm gonna go back here. And you can also change how thick they are and how, how deep they are in the, in the glass. Um, so that looks good to me. Uh, we could add shutters, we're not going to right now, but feel free to play with that. You can even add louvered shutters, it's kind of fun to do. The exterior wall detail and the interior wall, wall detail have to do with like how, how the wall around the window appears, that's kind of useful. But the thing I really want to draw your attention to is this classes tab right now here. And if anybody knows a better way to do this, I've read through the, do the documentation and played with this for hours, trying to figure out how you paint individual parts of the symbol different ways. And this kind of long, complicated process seems to be the only way to do this. So if anybody knows a better way, please send me an email or write in the comment line because I'd, I'd, I'd love to know about it. But if you notice here on the classes tab, these are classes like, this is referring to our classes, the actual classes that we have here in our, our uh, layers and classes, our organizational window. So we have all of the parts of the window are just sort of set to the default Windows class, except for glazing. The glass, Vectorworks automatically says the glass wants to be clear. So it creates a texture for you as soon as you create a window and puts in clear glazing in that window. So you could, of course, change it to some other um, style if you wanted. If you wanted to give yourself glass that wasn't clear, frosted glass or textured glass or something, you could create your own texture and then substitute that texture here. But right now it's automatically giving you clear glass. So right now we're going to go ahead and say okay because I want to show you how these um, these get uh, created. So while we're at it, I've got my window loaded into my um, my cursor here. So we might as well insert it there. You notice that it's kind of locked in. That little triangle at the bottom is locked into the bottom of the wall, and it's just waiting for me to double click to insert the window. So there's our window there with clear glazing by default um, and nothing else. So it's waiting for us to paint the parts of our window. So in the resource browser, take a look over here. I've got the the brick wall and the and the beige for the uh, the wall in the interior wall. The clear glass that Vectorworks automatically gave me just as soon as I inserted the window. And then I just created two textures, just green and gray. They're nothing fancy. It's just a, a color selected on the color channel of the of the texture. Uh, but these two textures are here in my resource browser. You need to make those first before you go to the next step, which is to go over to the classes tab here. Open up the organizational palette by clicking there and here's our classes tab and you notice that there is clear glazing that Vectorworks does for you automatically there's the green trim and the gray sash that I made so what I'm going to do here is just delete the green trim and as I delete it it's going to tell me well you know you got stuff painted green what do you want me to do with that so I'm going to reassign all of them to none so it's just going to make them white and I'll click OK so I've deleted that green trim class so notice there in our first window all the green stuff has gone away. The, the sashes are still gray and the glass is still clear, but the green trim has gone away. So let me show you how to do this from scratch. So go back to the classes tab and we're going to create a new class. So in this new class, we'll go ahead and call this green trim and then say, okay. And then we need to add the properties of this. So here's our green team. It automatically opens this window up for you here. And we're not dealing with a wall. We're not dealing with a roof. We need to check the other tab here. So this other tab down here at the textures, check the textures box. And this little pop-up window right here, click on this little box, is going to open up all the textures that we have available to us, including my green that I made for our sash. I know it's chopping it off the, the top of the uh, screen there, but you can still see green. I'm going to click on that, and there it's loaded in that green into this green trim class. So now I'm going to click OK to save that. There's our green trim. Say OK again, and now we'll go into our new window here, and we will just double click and, and click Edit. That'll take us right back to um, to that window settings in a moment, or maybe not. Here, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. Sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just gonna, oh, because I have the wall selected. I don't have the, my window selected, that's why. Let me deselect my wall, select the window, and now we'll try that again and go to edit. And it's gonna open up our Windows settings here, right where we left off here, the classes. And here's all these classes down. Uh, and now I've got, I wanna go ahead and assign colors to these. So for the interior jam, I'm gonna click right here and say green trim. And I'll do the same thing for the exterior. I'll do the sash, our gray sash color. And then the interior sash, you could paint, you know, the outside of the window and the inside of the window two different colors. You could have, you know, 
a white paint on the outside and wood uh, on the inside, something like that. Don't have a transom, so we can leave this alone. We do have exterior trim that we want to be green and interior trim. Uh, I said those backwards, but you get the idea. No shutters, skip those. Sill, we want those to be green, and we want the stool, the inside sill there, to also be green. And then we're gonna, we don't have a lentil, and we don't wanna mess with our glazing right now. And if we wanna check here, we can take a look at our window preview here in OpenGL now, and see that, yeah, that's basically what we expected to have happen, right, isometric. And we can say, yes, there's gray on all the bits of our sash, green on all the trim inside and out, and clear on the glass. So now when we say, okay, we now have our window that's painted nicely with the green trim all on the outside, gray sash on the inside, and the clear glass um, in the in the windows. So if we wanted to go back and fix this guy, we do the same thing. We just reassign those areas that have been set to none um, to uh, to green, and we'd have our two windows, even though they're slightly different. We made different choices when we created them, uh, and have a nicely inserted window in our wall. A nice thing about this is that we can then go back into, uh, if we go in and edit, just use the editor. In many cases, a lot of these things are going to be right here in the object info. Say we decided to, whoops, come on back here, uh, to change the, the how high it is. We decided that one we wanted that one to be six feet instead of six inches six eight we could just ch make that change right here in the object info and we're just kind of controlling remotely things about our window settings we can even go so far as to change the the actual shape of the window after it's been created here uh, in the object info palette here so lots of power that you can do right here in the object info if you want to go back to um, the larger settings, that's this tab right here that takes us back to the master window control panel here where we just were to do things like changing color. This you have to do when you're assigning color, you have to do that here in the window settings, but a lot of things you can do um, all just in the object info palette. So go ahead and play around with the, the window uh, insertion tool and take a look at the door tool. It's very similar in the way that they work. And if you know the terms of what these things, if you know the architectural words uh, of what an astragal is and what a transom and what a, you know, if, if you know what those words are, you'll be fine. Um, and if you don't know what those words are, you can look them up or you can just trial and error say, okay, I'll check that box and look what happened. Oh, it added this thing over here. And you can start to, to build that vocabulary and know what parts of the object you are creating and controlling. So good luck with that.